I remember that whenever I hear one of these flower introductions. I thought that was a stripped down introduction, Professor Berman, and I thank you very much. Now, I'm going to tell you another true story before I get into my fictions. That's a story about advancing age. When I was told that I was going to climb up on a platform here, uh, a young lady said over the telephone, oh, we'll be able to assist you up. <laughs> I, thought I, I said, I think I can make it. <laughs> but that's not an unreasonable. I'm an octogenarian. I, uh, Mrs. Wolk and I went to a summer place to cool off. We live in Palm Springs where time goes very gently. The desert doesn't change much from day to day, even from season to season. And I'm not all that aware of age, but at this summer place, an old gentleman came up to me, leaning on a cane actually, but hailing hearty enough, and he said, you're a writer. I want to show you something that I once read. In fact, I, I copied it down and carried it around ever since. I don't remember where I got it. But you look at it. Tell me if you don't think this is the way guys like you and I think about ourselves when we reach this age. And he gave me this sheet, and I started to read it, look at it. And he said, no, no, no please read it out loud. I, I love the thing. I love to hear it. I said, well, sure, I'll read it. And I did. And here was what he handed me. Now then, my jolly boys who are young and are old, who are foolish and are sensible, who gutted the years relentlessly and now number the days in wisdom, who desperately clasp girls and now fondly pat wives, <laughs> open the closed books, wake the memories, sniff the dry roses of regret, and then let us fill a cup and drink with love to that most noble, ridiculous, laughable, sublime, departed figure in all our lives, the young man that was. Let us drink to his dreams, for they were rainbow-colored, to his appetites, for they were strong, to his blunders, for they were huge, to his beloved, for she was sweet, to his pain, for it was sharp, to his time, for it was brief, and to his end, for it was to become one of us, in the land where the bright sunlight fades not, where the flowers are spring flowers and the grass is an April green forever, he still walks his jaunty, infinitely mistaken way. God pity us all, without with what precious coins have we bought our philosophy? Hey, my boys. He said, well, you read that nicely. He said, and don't you think that really does describe the, the way people like you and I feel when we get out of this age? I said, well, modesty forbids me to comment. That's from my first novel, Aurora Dawn, and I wrote it when I was 29 years old. But Aurora Dawn, this first novel of mine, bears very directly on the theme of the, of the evening. And the story of it is important. I'm deeply moved, of course, by this unexpected honor, the naming of the Herman Woke Chair of Modern Jewish Studies. And I'm particularly moved and surprised because the fact is, I'm not regarded as an American Jewish writer, exactly. I think uh, Professor Berman will bear me out on that. There, there is a group of, of well-known uh, Jewish writers, and there are books written about them, articles written about them. And it often happens that I don't appear in those discussions. Now, I, I make it perfectly clear I'm not complaining at all. I've, I've been honored above my desserts from the critics and from the audience. Nevertheless, <clears throat> there is this curious fact 
that when you talk with Jewish writers, you don't particularly think of Herman Wolk, and there's a reason for it, and it starts with Aurora Dawn. Before the war, I was a gag man, joke writer, for Fred Allen, the one who had the feud with Jack Benny. I see there's a murmur of recognition here. <laughs> he had this cracker barrel voice. He was a New Englander from way back. He hated California. His famous line was, well, California is a great place if you're an orange. <laughs> I worked for him for five years very uh, happily, and then, as uh, Professor Berman described, I went to sea. I was a naval officer for uh, four years, and out there for a lark, I started to write a novel, and that was Aurora Dawn. And it was just a, a lighthearted spoof about my experiences with the advertising business and working for Fred. It was published early in 1947, and here's the story of Aurora Dawn. There was a thing called the Book of the Month Club then. I don't know whether it still exists. But, but uh, and then it was very important. It was before Amazon.com. Even before paperbacks, and if you got a Book of the Month Club selection, you had a bestseller, and a considerable bestseller. Well, I never expected anything like that for my first novel. It was short, it was light. I'm proud of it. It was the first effort. I'm not ashamed of it, but it wasn't in that category. But here's what happened. William Faulkner uh, wrote a novel, one of his later novels, and the Book of the Month Club, of course, selected it, and that was quite appropriate. But about a month or so before it was due to come out, the great Faulkner decided he wanted to re re uh, revise his book a bit. And he took it back. The club was desperate, started to scramble around, <laughs> looking for something to send their people because of the book of the month. You know? And somehow they said, well, there's this, this, this book, this light book, this Aurora Dawn written by a fellow who used to write for Fred Allen. Let's use that. So Aurora Dawn became a Book of the Month Club selection, which meant that it was a considerable bestseller, which meant that the critics fell on it like a ton of bricks. And me, but although it received good notices too, I mean, the book did well in a light, in a small light way. But meantime, this was my debut. And first impressions are very important in personal relationships and in literature. And I made my debut with a successful book, which had nothing about Jews in it. And that was unusual, and I think that was the start of this anomaly in my career, which is my theme. And it's particularly anomalous because actually, I was soaked in Yiddishkeit from my childhood. Maybe some of you have read my, one of my later works, Inside Outside, a, uh, a really a, a family novel in an autobiographical book. And I want to read a passage from it to indicate to you the kind of background I had, which was very different from what it seemed to be in Aurora Dawn. <laughs> 